Hello, Assalamualaikum class. How are you today? Okay, so today I'm going to share on chapter 3. Okay, product design. So, this is the layout for the product design, chapter 3. Okay, so we'll start with definition. Okay, I, I will give a very a brief idea on the whole topic uh, in this slide. Okay. So first you have the definition. So for definition for product design is an approach to build a new product. So basically in this chapter is about uh, how you want to build a new product. Okay. Second is the product design features or characteristic. Okay. Third is the process of product design. Okay. When you want to conduct a product a new product development, of course you will have undergo a process. Okay, and then number four is the importance of the product design. Basically, why we want to have a good product design. Okay, and then uh, number six. Okay, number six is the service design. This is the difference between product and service. So, I give you focus on the expanding the service delivery convenience. So, another three you may add on uh, at your own. Okay, so in this class, I want to highlight on the issues of the product design. So this is the main main cause or main topic in the chapter 3. Okay, there are several issues. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this 7 subtopic, I will explain later. Okay, so issues in product design, we have modular design, robust design, CAD, CAM, virtual reality technology, value analysis, and sustainable and life cycle assessment. Okay, let's move to the first uh, issues. Okay. Okay, we rob I will start with robust design. So, robust design is basically involved with the quality of the product. Okay, the quality of the product uh, by decreasing the effect of variation without eliminating the cost since they are too difficult or too expensive to control. Okay, robust design ni Senang kalau you nak faham ialah produk tu dia boleh bertahan lama. Okay. So, dia, uh, the point here quite technical sikit because this is involved with uh, engineering part. But no worries, I'll provide with the YouTube link later you boleh tengok. Okay. So, product design ni idea, the idea is come from Dr. Taguchi. Okay. When you will say the product is robust is when it can perform properly in any situation okay so here i give the example of robust product lah. okay robust product example dia a pen that writes until the ink is empty so you boleh tulis satu pen tu sampai habis ink tak ada masalah tapi kalau product yang tak robust non robust a pen tu uh, you tulis kejap je dah ada masalah so dia panggil tak robust lah produk tu so Salah satu ciri robust ialah produk tu boleh bertahan lama. Okay. Uh, second example, I give you car. Okay. A car that can start at negative 20 degree Celsius degree. So, dekat uh, suhu yang di bawah paras kosong, negatif. Negatif 20 ni sangat sejuk. Tapi kereta tu boleh start dan boleh hidup seperti biasa. So, maksudnya produk uh, kereta tu sangat-sangat reliable lah. Sangat-sangat tahan lasak. Okay, so robust is something that lah, tahan lasak, uh, boleh tahan lama. Okay, non robust product, a car that do not start. Okay, third example, a TV that last 10 years with no need for repair. So, kalau TV tu, TV ke laptop ke tak kisah lah, boleh bertahan lebih lama daripada dia punya warranty. Uh, maksudnya, dia boleh, kita panggil dia sebagai robust design lah. Okay, a TV need to repair after 2 years. Okay, ataupun contoh macam phone you jatuh dalam air. Boleh hidup elok-elok lah. Tu dia panggil robust jugalah tu. Okay. Okay. So, act any activity can be called as robust design when the system have longer life. Life longer. A uh, longer life. Maksudnya dia boleh bertahan lama. Hayat dia. At ma ataupun dia ada high reliability. Okay. Ketahanan dia tu. Okay, more consistent from use to use, more consistent from product to product. More consistent from use to use ni contoh macam ink pen tadi tu lah. You boleh guna sampai habis. Okay. To perform consistently as consistently as temperature or other condition change. So, disebabkan oleh suhu, 
ataupun disebabkan oleh keadaan lain ada tekanan ke apa tapi produk tu still boleh hidup boleh jalan boleh gerak boleh berfungsi seperti biasa itu kita panggil sebagai robust design okey clear eh okey so that's why robust design kalau just now you tengok dia berkait dengan quality so high quality product normally dia akan bertahan lama lah okey so now we move to the second uh, issues which is modular Okey, modular ni macam ni. Modular ni kita akan divide kan uh, parts tu kepada smaller parts. Okey, dan this smaller part ni kita panggil sebagai modules. Okey. Modul ni kita akan create kan dia dan kita akan build dia menjadi sesuatu yang lain. Okey, contoh kalau you nak faham senang, modular ni macam puzzle uh, bukan puzzle. Lego. Lego kan dia macam kecil-kecil blok kecil-kecil tu kan. Padahal you boleh Combine, combine, combine dia, you boleh build satu bangunan ke, satu kereta ke. Ha, tu adalah jenis modular design. Okay, so later you can look at this YouTube. Uh, apa ni, explaining details more about modular design. Okay. So, kalau dekat kita punya life, uh, kalau biasa, kalau kita modular design ni, contoh macam produk IKEA lah. Kan, produk IKEA you beli, uh, contohnya meja ke. Kan, you beli tu dia dalam bentuk parts kan. And then later on, kita datang balik rumah dan kita pasang sendiri. Okay. DIY product. Jenis-jenis uh, DIY lah. Do it yourself. Okay. Okay. Third one is the computer aided design. CAD. So, CAD basically you use computer to create a design. And dia ada software dia lah. Normally, dia panggil sebagai AutoCAD. Uh, AutoCAD ni normally di, selalunya digunakan oleh dalam bidang architecture. Engineers and also construction lah untuk lukis. Sama ada 2D ataupun 3D drawing. Okay, again, you can look at this YouTube video for further uh, understanding. Okay, next is CAM. So, CAM basically dia datang daripada CAD. Okay, CAD to CAM. So, dia sama juga. Dia guna software, software dan juga machine. Okay, dia ada machine lah. To automate the manufacture process. So, the combination antara uh, computer dan juga machinery. Okay. So, dalam CAM system biasanya dia ada tiga komponen. First software. Okay. The second is machine. Machine tu untuk create product tu lah. Into finished product. Uh, create raw material into finished product. And then post processing. So post processing ni biasanya kita akan tekan-tekan dekat mesin tu supaya mesin tu berjalan. And these three component memerlukan human labor dan juga skill. Maksudnya benda tu tak boleh gerak sendiri. Dia kena ada manusia yang kena buatkan benda. Contoh macam software kena ada orang yang designkan. Mesin pun sama. Mesin tu kita, kita kena buat setting dia. Okay baru dia boleh gerak. Okay, to CAM. So, CAM uh, to C... Sorry, CAD to CAM process. So, without CAM, there is no CAD. So, CAM dengan CAD ni, dia saling berkait. Dia complement each other. Okay. So, CAD will focus on design of a product or parts. Okay. How the product looks. How does it will function. So, CAM will focus on how to make the product. Untuk merealisasikan produk tu, kita guna CAM. CAD kita guna untuk design. You nak Bentuk macam mana lawa, okay. nak tengok macam mana function whatsoever tu kena CAD. CM ialah mesin yang akan merealisasikan design yang kita buat dalam CAD tu. Okay. So, this are the process you boleh baca lepas ni. Okay, next ialah virtual reality technology. So, uh, VR ni adalah a simulation experience sama ada similar or completely different from the real world. So yang ni you boleh tengok contoh saya bagi kat sini siap-siap Pokemon Go tu lah. Okay game Pokemon Go tu you guna device untuk kejar Pokemon tu kan. Pokemon tu tak wujud pun dalam reality. Tapi dia wujud dalam you punya apps ataupun software. Ha, tu dia panggil sebagai VR technology lah. Okay so let you boleh tengok YouTube ni uh, details about VR technology. Okay in fact ada cerita Korea lah. Uh, cerita Memories of Alhambra tu kalau you pernah tengok uh, tu adalah digunakan VR teknologi ok ok next ialah value analysis ok value analysis ataupun di, dikenali sebagai value engineering sama ok this is about cost reduction so macam mana 
kita nak hasilkan produk yang bagus tapi kita nak pastikan kos itu adalah kos yang terendah yang kita boleh dapat. Okay. So basically it's all about how to lower the total cost lah. Okay. Okay. Last kali ialah sustainability and life cycle assessment. So this uh, LCA life cycle assessment ni kita akan gunakan untuk evaluate the environmental impact. Okay. Kita akan tengok kesan-kesan uh, alam sekitar okay, terhadap produk kita. Okay, evaluate environmental impact of your product. Okay, that's why isu sekarang kita nak perhasilkan produk yang bagus dan juga produk yang environmental friendly contohnya. Okay, that's why kita guna produk yang macam boleh recycle. Okay, uh, dia punya packaging lah especially kita boleh recycle. Uh, so kalau macam isu sekarang COVID-19 ni Isu dia ialah contohnya macam mask dan juga PPE. PPE tu dia buat daripada plastik kan. Ha, plastik tu dia tak biodegradable. Sama juga dengan mask. Dia tak hancur. So itu adalah uh, challenge kepada business people lah to create a product yang bagus and at the same time dia adalah a product yang mesra alam sekitar. Okay. So with that uh, I end my presentation. So you can look through for the whole slide uh, later. Untuk video ni I explain details on the issues of the product design sahaja. Okay, thank you. See you guys in Telegram class lah.